Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Best of the Oprah Show. My friend, Dr. Phil, I call him, tell it like it is, Phil, pulled no punches when he talked to a bunch of moochers. Can you believe Phil and moochers? Don't you want to see that? These were grown men and women living at home still, sponging off their parents, not contributing a dime to the rent or lifting a finger to pitch in with housework or cooking. The frustrated parents were at their wits' end, and Dr. Phil helped them get their message across loud and clear. Move out of this house. Some people say, my guests are sponges, are freeloaders, downright moochers. They are grown children who have an agenda to take, take, take from the people who love them most. It's a big problem that many people do not know how to solve. And Dr. Tell It Like It Is, Bill McGraw is back to give a strategy or something like that. Uh, kick, kick in the pants is more like it. To anyone who is mooching or being mooched on. Katrina Minchin wrote to Dr. Phil, you did, Katrina, uh, to help her with her freeloading brother, Arlon. And both she and her mom, Henrietta, are fed up with Arlon's moochin' ways. Is that yes, true? They are. He That's is 36, and you're still <laughs> living at home and does not help with the bills. No, I don't. <laughs> no. So we went to check it out at Arlon's to see what's going on there. Take it, take a look. Hi, Oprah. I want you to meet my 36-year-old moocher. This is where he sleeps, eats, watches TV, and creates a grand mess. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hi, Oprah. This is my little apartment. Let me show you around. Over here, I have a sitting room, my living room, my kitchen, master bedroom, guest bedroom. There is dust up here, so much Oprah. I wrote, hello. And down here, hi, Oprah. And if he stays longer, much longer, we're going to have so much dust, I'll be able to write you a letter. I don't think of it as much. I think this is, this is my home. This is the, the family home. My sister thinks I'm a mooch. I tripped over a cord once in here. What happened? I broke my foot. She shouldn't have been in here. I don't really pay any bills around the house. Because I usually spend all my money going out. Oprah, he's 36 years old and still living in my house. I need help. Are you really serious that you want him out? I do. You do? Really I want most him out. certainly do. Yeah. He's been there long enough, and uh, I have made, taken some steps to get him out. Mm -hmm. But he comes right back again. Comes right back. What yes. brought you back in the first place? First time I moved out, I was 27. Yeah. And it was sort of an adventure, and it didn't work out, so I moved back home. It was an adventure to move yeah. out. OK. Then the second time, um, I moved to Atlanta. Yeah. Just to go to school for a year. Yeah. After that, I stayed a couple more years. Then I moved back home. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. And the third time I moved out, I moved to Florida, and I stayed uh, half a year, and I just came back home. Yeah, what, what are you shaking your head for? Right back again. Yeah, right back again. Yes. What do you want to say, Phil? Well, you, you said I... you were 27 when you moved out the first time? Yeah. Did that strike you as odd? Did you notice Not that your parents were, like, getting older and stuff? <laughs> Not at all. Why do you object to this? I mean, why do you object to him being 36, living at home, paying no bills, not cleaning up, and eating all your food oh. and spending your money? That's it right there. Yeah? Um, he, I do spend a lot of money helping him. Um, and I don't like cleaning up grown-up people's mess. If they are disabled, that's a different thing. But he's an able-bodied person, and he should be able to clean up his own mess. Have you all had real conversations about it? Oh, all the time. All the time. Yes, we talk about it a lot. Uh-huh. Do, do, do you know she doesn't want you there? No, not really. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. Did, you know, it, I was reading in the letter. Didn't, didn't you tell me, Katrina, in the letter? Yes. That you change the locks yes, on the I house? Yes, I have changed the locks. Yes. OK, well, now, there's a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. I can see that. Okay. Oh, you, you changed the locks twice. twice. I've changed the locks twice. I've even been to the police and I had a no trespass order. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Now, when he came back, I didn't uh, call the police. They would have come and pick him, picked him up. Oh, so you're really but serious? I'm serious. Okay. Why do you really want him gone? I mean, this has nothing to do with your loving your son, Arlen. Nothing so at all. you know that she loves you. Obviously, yes, she, she, does. she loves right. you. But why, what would it make your life 
more fulfilled, better, happier, easier if he were out of the house? What is really the problem for you? Well, I don't like the financial burden. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to travel. There are things I'd like to do to the house and just improve myself. You know, just things that I want to do that because he's there and the financial strain it has, it's a burden. It's a burden. And you don't like it because you see what's happening to your mother. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm, it's been going on a long, long time. Yeah, we can and, see that. And yeah. I'm just kind of tired of hearing about it. And I know the situation could be eradicated if he were to leave. I want my mom to be able to enjoy her life. Yeah. And, and not still be taking care of and her. And not to be taking care of him. OK. So. And have you all talked about it? Is it a thing within the oh, family? Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. Constantly. Talk about it quite they a bit. talk about it. I haven't heard a lot of this. Constantly. I, we talk about I know, this. I've traveling and all that. And I'm not really a bad son or a bad person. I do a lot around the house. And I'm planning on going back to school. I'm planning on moving out. What are you going back to school for? Um, I want to go back for music. I went before for advertising design. And I left school. Uh -huh. And I want to go back and just get my degree. I've only got like a year and a half to go. OK. Does the word job mean anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, because, I, mean, I mean, you keep leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back. In, in Texas, you know, everybody always had an no egg sucking dog. You know, you just couldn't ever get rid of them. You, you know, you'd run them off and they'd come back. You'd feed them and they'd come back. And then you just couldn't ever get rid of them. And that's what she's telling you here. And you're saying you don't want to leave. Well, yeah, part of me doesn't want to leave, but part of me does, you know? What? Yeah, which part of you wants to leave? I hope all. I'm saying, which part of you wants the to leave? Is there a part that says, I want to, I want to live like a man? I want to have my own life, my own job. I mean, what part of you wants to leave? But I've, I've left a couple of times, and I've done that, and, you know. Just wasn't much to it. Wasn't huh? much to it at all. Yeah. So you'd rather lay in there on the bed and. I got my cable. I've, you know, got a nice meal. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, really. I'm going back to school and get my degree and let my mom have a better life. It's soon. I ain't buying it. I buying it because there's a you need a whole big paradigm shift here. You just yep. and, and you're one of those people who uses school as your excuse to get mm -hmm. through life. You keep mm -hmm. going to school, putting off your real life. I can see that. Would you say that you use school and you put off your life and you try this and that's not it and then you come back home and then you try that and then well the whole, yeah I've done that a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the whole I'm going to get my degree thing sort of postpones your life. It allows you to live in limbo. Yeah. Correct. OK. Right. I want to know how this happened, that you, who obviously is a very intelligent, savvy, sophisticated woman, raised a son who doesn't want to leave home. You know, I'm just still trying to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what was That's... going on that would make him want to still be dependent upon you to feel like he doesn't want to get out there and take care of himself? I need help in figuring that out. Really, mm -hmm. I do. Because I, I, I know that he has the mental ability mm -hmm. to do well. Yeah. He right. can play five <clears throat> instruments. He can write music. He can even sing. His little group won the talent show in our town. He can draw anything he wants to draw. So he's an artist. Yeah. He's, he's an, artist, an artist, a real artist. You know, everything you just said, I can say about my seventh grade son. Mm -hmm. He won his little talent scout thing, <laughs> and he can draw real well. Mm -hmm. And it, we're talking about a 36-year-old right. man here. And you teach people how to treat you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You teach them how to treat you. Mm -hmm. He's doing this because he can. That's true. You're doing this yeah, because you can. Because yeah. let me tell you, if you decide to put him out of the house and keep him out of the house, mm -hmm. then by necessity, you will do something different, won't right. you? Right, I'm not tough enough. Because if you make it happen, then you will do what you need to do. And what you need to do is get a job, get a life, get out. Get a job, get a life, get out. And you, and he's those, not... those are the three strategies not in Phil's book. Get a job, get a life, get out. They're called The Three Gets by Phil uh, McGraw. Can I say I do have a job? You do have a job. I do have a job. But you and... don't contribute to the household. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. Because uh, you use your money to party? Mainly, yes. See, when, when I lived in Atlanta... What is that? No, really, seriously, oh, what is that? <laughs> That's, that's bad. But when I lived in Atlanta... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. No, what is that? No, wait a minute. You just said, that's bad, but... 
And as you know, and when people tell me but, that means forget everything I just said. Now I'm going to tell you what I really think. <laughs> and, and you're saying this is okay? No, it's not okay. Uh, but obviously he does believe it's okay. Well, of course. No, I, I know. I, in my heart, I know it's not okay. And I, I'm ashamed that I do it. But in your what, you think it is okay because you do do it. Because people do what works is what Phil says. Just all the that, time. you know, that little devil arm that sits on my shoulder going, go ahead, go ahead. Well, Eddie. he needs to get a job too <laughs> because you. You have to get in gear here. You know, give him his walking papers like she's giving you your walking papers. And it doesn't mean she doesn't love you, and you don't need to feel guilty when you put him out on the street, because if you think the sacrifice is helping, mm -hmm. you know, if it was, if you were doing this and it was really helping mm -hmm. him, then you could say, hey, that's great. Like, mm -hmm. if he needed a kidney and it would really help, you make the right. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If you think this is sacrifice, this sacrifice is helping, mm -hmm. you're a damn fool because mm -hmm. it's not. All you're doing is cheating him out of the of the feelings of being a man. Isn't overindulgence its own form of child abuse? It is. It's one of the most insidious forms of child abuse known to man because you cheat people out of that sense of accomplishment, that sense of awareness, the pride of knowing I did something. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're taking away from him by letting him do it. You're not helping him, you're hurting him. And I know you don't mean to, but you are. I realize are. that. You do realize you're hurting. I realize that. Because mm -hmm. you're not even forced. I mean, let's say you are a really talented musician and you have a gift for that art. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, I, we accept that. Okay. You can't be forced in, to, to develop that dream, to fulfill that dream, as long as you have this big you know, cushion mm -hmm. with the striped sheets to fall back on. <laughs> you know? You can't. You can't. Because you always have that to rely on. But, uh, I'm glad I have it to rely on. I, you know, that I know that I have some kind of safety net because I've gone out there before and I wound up homeless, sleeping in laundromats, abandoned apartments, mm -hmm. empty cars. And, you know, now, you know, I know when I go out again, I don't want that to happen again. Look, we can talk, you know, I could give you some little, little strategies and steps and all that. But you got to want to, yeah, and yeah. you don't want to. I want to. I yeah. want to. Yeah. And unless somebody stamps stupid on my forehead, <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I mean, I don't believe that for a minute, and you don't either. So what's the first step? So she just kicked me out and... <laughs> it's not kicking you out. It's giving you an opportunity. <laughs> giving you an opportunity to stand on your own. Right, and you could see that was my dining room. It was. It was. Oh, at yeah, one with time. the cat, that was mm -hmm. your dining that room. That was my dining room. Don't you miss your dining room? I sure do. Yes. Won't you miss your son? <laughs> Not right away. <laughs> no, I tell you what, because her son can come see her again. That's true. He can come see her, and he can come do some things for her. Instead of, it's not like you're getting sent to Siberia. You know, you can come over on weekends. You can call before you come, and you can come and, and mow the yard. You can take her to somewhere. You can do lots of things and have a relationship without mm -hmm. sucking her dry. Yeah. Yeah. Was that old age sucking dog? Next to mom and dad who don't know if they can make it through another day with a whole brood in their house. She's got her daughter, her granddaughter, stepdaughter, her husband, their baby, and one more on the way. Yikes with hardly any help cleaning, cooking, or paying the bills. Back in a moment, more moochers to come. Sharon Sanderson is ready for her adult children, she says, to grow up and get out. She says her household is like Grand Central Station, and Sharon and her husband, Roger, are the ones that are being taken for a ride. My house is full to the max. We have my daughter, her nine-month-old baby, my stepdaughter, her husband, their eight-month-old baby, and one on the way, all living under one roof. And it's time for them to go and for the mooching to stop. The kids depend on us way too much. We do most of the cleaning, cooking, grocery shopping, and pay for all the bills, even driving. My stepdaughter doesn't even have her driver's license. And probably what bothers me the most, all is the babysitting. They just do not act like responsible parents should. Now, we've tried to get them to leave. Every month, we talk to them about how they can move on, or at least what they can do around the house. Y'all need to start really helping out more here. Yeah, just as soon as the meeting's over, things go right back to the way they were. My 20-year-old daughter, Jessica, is the worst. She doesn't even see the messy trail she leaves behind. The only time I ever clean up is when I need them to babysit Cody Otherwise, I don't really see any point in cleaning. Cindy, my 23-year-old stepdaughter, just doesn't seem to know how to move out and expects us to keep helping. 
We have zero freedom or control. We've been married for 10 years and have had only one week alone in our own house. Please help us take back our home. Phil? Well, you know, I could, I could talk to you for a week, so, but before, before we do that, what are you people thinking? I mean, what, what is going through your mind that tells you it's okay? That looks like a dormitory. I don't think it's okay. And I have... Well, based on results, you do, because I saw you holding a baby in one hand and stirring a pot in another and, and cleaning up and all of that kind of stuff. You must think it's okay or you wouldn't do it. I, I care about the grandbabies, and I do whatever I can for them. But I really, that's not how I want my house to be. How did this happen? How did, did one move in or, and then another one moved in? Well, we had them all out. <coughs> you had them all out. All out. And then um, Jessica needed to come back because she was going to have a baby. And mm -hmm. we thought, okay, she said, this long range plan, you know, I've got a plan. So we're okay. We can work a plan. And then within six months, we get another call. Somebody else is having a baby and need a place to stay for a month. And that's turned into six months. Ten months. Ten months. Mm -hmm. And now it's like they don't know when they might leave because they're going to have another one. And, you know, I just keep thinking, okay, next month it's going to be different. People are going to move out. And hello, they're still there. Birth control? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the, these people are out making bad decisions, yeah. and you're picking up the tab for it. And then you wonder why they, they won't change it? I mean, if you let them do it, then that's what they're going to do. I mean, you know that, don't you? Yes, in my head I do. But my actions don't show that. But, yeah. I've talked to them. What, what are you... What, it works pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That um, was you on the tape that said... I don't see any point in cleaning. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, I just clean the house. Six months later, you got to do it all over again, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we once had an agreement that it was if her room, I could close the door on her room as long as it didn't spoil, you know, spill over everywhere else. Mom, that's no kind of agreement. Oh. To, to just say I'm going to seal off the mess here. But she's feeling guilty about the grandchildren. We all understand right. that. Well, you feel guilty about the grandchildren. Right. And, of course, that's emotional extortion. I mean, you understand, that's the lever, right? Yeah. They go out, get pregnant, have these babies, and they come in and say, well, hey, kick me out and kick the baby out. Is that what you want to do? Exactly. And there comes a point where you got to say, you people got 30 days. You got 30 days. I'll give you that much time to get yourself a job, get yourself a roof, and get yourself out there. And if they don't take care of the babies, then bring the babies back or call child welfare but you've got to get these people out of your house and on their feet, or their li your life's never going to change. Right. Next, he's a 39-year-old ski instructor who shows up at his parents' doorstep as soon as ski season is over and stays for six months. Back in a moment. Uh, Betsy recently got her own act together, and she moved out of her parents' home when she was 34. And Betsy says if she can do it, her brother Bob can too. Bob is 39 <laughs> and a ski instructor six months out of the year. The other six months, he lives off of mom and dad. Take a look. This is big. Woo. I'm 35 years old. I just recently moved out of my parents' house about a year ago. But my 39-year-old brother is still living here. He doesn't pay rent. He doesn't buy any food and doesn't have any bills to pay. He just comes and lives at my parents' house and mooches off of them for six months out of the year. And the other six months, he's in Utah teaching skiing at Snowbird. I don't really mooch off them, but uh, I do live here rent-free. I'm going to show you the room of a 39-year-old who still lives at his parents' house. As you can see when you come in here, this room doesn't have a whole lot of character. Well, I enjoy it here. It's, it's my family. My brother doesn't do any chores around the house. I don't do a lot around here all the time. Uh, he does cut the grass in the summer. This year, I really didn't do anything. I have been uh, very lazy, I could say. You know, I've, I've been just taking it easy, I've playing some tennis and, and golf and, uh, you know, just kind of hanging out. I think it's about time he grows up and gets a life and gets out of his parents' house. This is Bob and Betsy's mom, uh, Betty. What do you, what, what do you want to say? Uh, I just feel that he has a lot more potential than 
skiing. It's really, he comes home and he has, he has refinished all my hardwood floors. He put in a ceramic tile floor. He redid my whole kitchen. But did you uh, ask him to do that? No, he, I think he does it because he thinks that it's payment for it. He just does everything around my house. And I think he think he does it because he thinks that it's payment for. So does he him do everything, or home. is he lazy? As you said, you were basically lazy this summer. You do everything. You are participating well, in the house. In prior years, I have done things to you know put in the. In prior years. Yes. Okay. This summer, I, I admit that I was quite lazy. How do you know? how do you feel about how your life's turning out at 39? Well, I I teach children how to ski, and it's in Snowbird, Utah, the most beautiful place in the world. And you know, I don't think that I could ever ever give that up. You know, but that's only six months of the year, and it's not very lucrative as well. But the other six months of the year, I feel that I need to, you know, do something else. How do, how do you feel during the six months of the year that you're not up in Snowbird. paradise there skiing? Uh, depressed, and you know. Not very good. Why do you think you get depressed that six months? Uh, I think it's kind of a seasonal thing, and, and probably I feel as though I'm not living up kind of to my potential yeah. as so well. So when, when you're out there working and having an impact and interacting with people and being productive, you feel pretty good. I feel great. And then you when know, you're it's... home, you don't feel so good. That's true, yes. Do, do you think yeah. there's a correlation there? <laughs> <laughs> You think? There probably is, yes. There definitely wonder, is. Well, seriously, I wonder what would happen if in that other six months, you got a job then, too. You're right. I agree with you. Well, but, I mean, you didn't just figure that out since you got here. The probably, no. only, probably the only thing you figured out since you got here was you didn't want to be here. I think, yeah. Third segment's really tough. Yeah, that's Harlan <laughs> saying, too, boy, he didn't know it was going to be this bad. I think probably I've kind of denied it for this has been going on for seven years and I've kind of denied it every year and I'd pick up this you know a special project maybe redoing the kitchen or a new hardwood floor or roof what what have you and, and just think that you know that's okay you know, I wonder no, how job. do your daughters feel about how do you feel about being at home not really taking care of yourself well I really do want to move out but the situation that I'm in, it is, I really do, I promise. It's just very difficult when you have a child. I lived at home. I had just been out of the house for a month when I found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. I had lived at home all that time. I really, but I, I don't like living at home. I don't like having several parents for my son, you know? Uh -huh. And when I do live at home, it makes it really easy just to drop him, you know, say, well, mama, can you take him real quick? I gotta go do something. I don't understand why in your house you can't have things run the way you want to under your roof. I don't understand that. Well, I don't understand why how you can have a house where nobody is paying a thing and they just create their own rules and nobody contributes to the household. Well, I don't get that. One of the things that I learned just through this already leading up to this was that I think we don't have any backup. We don't have anybody to say, yes, you're right. And their peers are telling them, it's OK. But we don't have peers. No backup, it's your house. Well, I know that. It's your house. That's the backup. Look at the address. This is my <laughs> address. Yeah. And I, but let and me you ask you. you have the right to have <clears throat> things run the way you want to in your house where you are paying the bills. Well, I put my foot down one time and told her, either clean your room up or get out, and she got out. And I got her room clean, and a month later, she's back. Well, you really don't like cleaning up, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Clean up or move? OK, I'll move. OK, but let me ask you something. T tell me this. You realize it's their house, yeah. their money, mm -hmm. and you're there as a privilege extended by them. Mm -hmm. So what is it that gives you the right to just blow off the rules, not, not do what they want you to do in their house? Tell me how you justify that in your mind. Well. I do try to clean up. I mean, okay, I saw the tape I, piece. I do. I really do. But it's just like you try to clean up. And did you know we were coming that day? <laughs> yeah. With well, the cameras, okay. Fine. They were. They told okay. us we couldn't touch anything. But I did straighten up just a little bit. She did pick up. But, she um, did pick up. That was a picked up version. There was a pile of clothes in my den of her babies, and they okay. she moved them. Answer my question. What gives you the right? to tell them, I won't live by your rules in your house. And that's for all I of you. I hear this. That's all of you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't feel like I have the right to tell my mother, you know, but 
You may not say the words, but you're living them. Right. Yeah, yes, I know that, and I, I really don't know why. I just... Isn't it because you um, can? I mm. guess. Isn't it because you can? Mm. I guess so. Arlen, what's your answer to that question? What gives That's you the answer. right to live in that house and run by your own rules when you know your mother has a set of rules? What gives you the right? What do you feel gives you the right to do that? I, I don't have a right, but I do it anyway. And it's wrong. So you recognize you don't have the right. Because what you're doing is you're saying, I will not treat the people that are feeding me, clothing me, and housing me with dignity and respect. That's it. And you may say, I don't have anywhere to put my baby today, but you can certainly treat your parents with dignity and respect and follow the rules of their house. You may not have a house to go to, but while there's one you're in, you can sure follow the rules and treat them and with say, dignity and respect. And say, is there anything I can do to help you? That's right. For I mean, my free ride. Earn, yeah. Yeah, that's what we don't earn get. the right to that's be That's what there. you don't get. We don't right. get that. That's because you all don't demand it, I swear. That's because you all aren't demanding it. Because nobody could live in your house and treat your, disrespect your house unless Because, you, you know, it. that's you, you, you learn what you live. My, my daddy would have jerked a knot in my tail by mo 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, with your egg-sucking self. <laughs> <laughs> Next, two college-age sons who don't go to college, don't have jobs, and live at home. Their mom wants them out. One son calls himself the critter in the basement because that's the only place left to sleep at his parents' house. Back in a moment. Darren is 23. His brother Ryan is 21. And their mom, Marilyn, fears that this will become their way of life. Because what you've seen already, has it frightened you? from the 36-year-old yes, and the 39-year-old. <laughs> yes. uh, and that they will amount to nothing. Neither of the boys has a job, 21 and 23, and they don't go to school. Can you try? Well, just can you see <laughs> This household is very hectic. I feel as though I'm running myself ragged. I have two sons, ages 23 and 21, and they're both still living here at home. It is a big problem. The boys do not parent. I live in my mom's basement, pretty much on the couch now. The best thing about living at home is uh, no bills. It's convenient, there's food always made for you. It's like your kid again. On a typical day when I don't have any plans, I just get up whenever. I help with chores, I help clean or cook, but it's only whenever I feel like doing something. For feeling like my mom's getting fed up with me, I do pour it on pretty thick usually. I can go to college pretty much any time I want. It's paid for. I just haven't decided on what I want to do with my life. I just don't want to go there and waste a bunch of money. We are renovating right now, and so it's making living quarters very cramped. Me and my brother are going to have to share a room. We won't, we won't be able to handle that. I guess my mom is hoping that'll cause one of us to move out. I'm ready to do just about anything. <laughs> to have them leave. Wow. You are ready to have them. I'm yeah. ready. First of all, you're from Alberta, Canada? Yes. That's the accent. Yes. Hi, everybody in Canada. <laughs> we have a lot of viewers there. <laughs> Hello, in our audience from Canada. So you want them to go, but you guys don't want to? No. No. It's easy living at home. Easy living at home. OK. <laughs> but is easy what it's about? No. I mean, is that what your life's about? That's not what I want for my life. But based on results, that's what you want for your life, because that's what you're doing. I mean, was it yes. you laying on the bed, throwing the ball? Yeah. Up again? Does that pay pretty good? Mm, no. no. I, mean, you, I mean, you understand you're not accomplishing anything. Yeah. Because I'll tell you something, you guys are still pretty young. I mean, you're not young enough to be doing what you're doing. But, you know, my dad told me something a long time ago when I was like 16, I did something like real stupid. And he said, all you will ever be, you are now becoming. All you will ever be, you are now becoming. That what you do in the early innings can determine where your life winds up 20 or 30 years from now. Absolutely, yeah. And you guys are blowing it. You, you say you go to college anytime you want, but you, but you don't want to waste the money? Well, I don't know. I don't really no, you're know. You're wasting your life. What do you mean, money? If, if, you're gonna, if you're just not going to be doing anything, you might as well be getting an education, right? Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I'm not sure. I'm just kind of used to living at home now. You, you hear that, Mom? Yes. What, what, what do you think? We've discussed 
just kicking them right out. And I know. Um, so what do you guys want? I mean, do you want to do something with your life? I want to do something with what? my life. Do you want her to kick you out? I mean, does she need to do that? And, and doesn't that seem ridiculous versus sitting down and making a productive plan? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, you can kick them out or you can say, okay, we're going to make a plan and we're going to carry the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you knew it was going to be one or the other, which would you choose? I'd make a plan. Definitely a plan. But you're doing it, and we said it with everybody here, you're doing it because you can. Yes. Yeah. I mean, do you hear that, Mom? I They're telling you right now. And They're I, saying, yeah. I do this because she lets me. <laughs> and it's oh, easy to be that. at home, you said. <coughs> you said. It's oh, easy. Yeah. You don't have bills to worry about? You don't have bills to worry about? Well, now, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, sometimes you hope people require more of themselves, but if not, you have to require more of them. And, and whether well, it's that's school... That's really key. Say that again, <clears throat> Phil. If people don't require enough of themselves, you have to start requiring it of them. More of them. Yeah. You know, for example, I'd say it to everybody here to... You're not off the hot seat yet, uh, <laughs> But my attitude has always been, if you don't have a job, then your job is to get a job, okay? I mean, you, would, you have to work at least as hard on getting a job as you would if you had a job. If you had a job, you'd get up and be gone at 7.30, you'd stay gone all day and work, right? Yeah. So if you don't have a job, get up at 7.30 and go spend all day looking for a job. At least work as hard. That's really good advice. I mean, you, you're laying there throwing a ball against the ceiling, and you got no job. Yeah, you might as well be in prison, my goodness. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're in your own little life prison. But, I mean, yeah. how do you feel about what I'm saying? Oh, I totally agree. I get jobs and stuff, but just seasonal and stuff like that, they always end. Yeah, well... Nothing. Seasonal, you, Bob. That's a Bob <clears throat> seasonal thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Six months, love it, then, eh, not feeling well, maybe it. Maybe y'all could live with him in the winter and... <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> but... But, but tell me this, and either one of you can, can answer this for me. Where do you think your life is headed? Based on what you're doing, where's your life headed? Where will you be when you're 36 and 39? Right now, nowhere. Yeah, the way things are looking right now. I can see it going anywhere. How do you feel about that? I don't feel good about it at all. But that's part of maturity. You understand as you get a little older, we, we, you don't have to like it, you just have to do it. Okay. There are things, you know, when you're, when you're a child, you say, hey, I do what I feel like doing. But the part of maturing is realizing, I don't have to like it, I just have to do it. You don't have to want to go to school, you just have to go to school. You don't have to want to go to work every day, you just do it. And then pretty soon, you start finding some rewards in it. And you start feeling some mastery over your environment. And you start feeling some power and you say, hey, this does have its rewards. But you're not going to find that laying in the basement. <laughs> Mom, That's right. they're not going to find that laying in the basement. You're cheating these boys if you let them do that. Yvette Curtis is 26, and she admits that she's a moocher, too. Uh, this is a mooch festival. I never knew there were so many. <laughs> yeah. But she wants to change her ways and move out. Yvette wrote to Dr. Phil for help. Take a look. Dear Oprah and Dr. Phil, I'm a 26-year-old college graduate who has no intention of moving from my mom. I have stayed home not because I want to, but because I have no idea how to live an adult life. My mom still does a lot for me. Most of the grocery shopping and laundry, pays almost all the bills, even gives me extra cash when I cause an emergency. When I try to tell her what I want, I sound like a 16-year-old. This thinking has put me in financial debt and given me an unstable journey in my career. I'm an intelligent woman who has big dreams, but I have gotten myself caught in this cycle of control and approval from my mother. I don't do much of anything without her permission. She makes me feel guilty otherwise. Please help me grow up and start taking responsibility for my life. Does your mother want you to leave or stay? My mom, I think she, she really wants me to stay. She, Sometimes she tells me to go, but then... Because you're babying her. You like her being the baby girl, yeah. and you yes. are what, part what of it. What do you want for her, Mom? Well, I want her to get out there and do what she can, really wants to do. Yvette likes to do too much at one time. What do you think the biggest mistake is, Phil, the parents make and when trying to motivate their children? First off is, is just allowing them 
to not be who they can be. Do I you mean, parents, uh, th those of you who came today and those of you watching, you do see how this is another form of abuse, right? You do, it's kind of very clear that just another form of abuse. I mean, because y what we're doing is we're seeing people that are fixed in like the teenage years. And parents would never have their children go back through the third grade for like 10 years in a row. <laughs> They'd never get like to that and say, okay, you did that pretty well. We'll just stay right there. Yeah. Okay? But that's exactly what's happening with their social IQ. Their adaptive IQ has stopped. They've continued to learn and read and go to school. But the adaptive IQ, the social IQ, got right there and stopped. And the parents started enabling them to stay right there at that level yeah. Yeah. because it was easier. And you've got to not do that. I mean, the parents have to say, no way. Coming up, they were $35,000 in debt. Instead of moving in with their parents, they discovered an unusual way to pay off their bills. Now they're living a life full of adventure. How do they do it? We'll find out next. So when Nathan and Erica Weaver found themselves drowning in $35,000 of unpaid bills with no way of paying them off, their lives took a major detour. Instead of moving in with their parents and asking them for money, they chose a very different road and found their spirits along the way. This is what we're talking about. We lived the high life. Expensive hotels, luxurious vacations, gourmet dinners. We charged everything on credit cards. Then we found ourselves $35,000 in debt. Our parents were very disappointed. Both sets of parents offered for us to move in with them. We even considered filing bankruptcy, but we figured that we got ourselves into this mess and we're gonna get ourselves out. We wanted to feel good about ourselves. We were tired of being in this negative cycle of spending more than we had, and we didn't wanna be the kind of people that didn't clean up after our own problems. We came up with a plan that was scary, but pretty exciting, and it made us feel good about ourselves. Well, first thing we did was clean house. We sold everything that had gotten us into debt. The nice car, furniture, mountain bikes, stereos, everything that we thought was so important. It was so freeing. Then came the biggest change. We couldn't afford an apartment, so where were we gonna live? And how are we gonna make money at the same time? Well, we went out and got our commercial truck driver's license. This is our new home now. It sounded crazy, and it was, but it was the best thing we ever did. We live and work on the road and are paying off our debts at the same time. We never imagined ourselves as truck drivers, but as college graduates with successful careers. But we knew we had to take responsibility and not rely on our parents to bail us out of our money problems. Being a truck driver can be very humbling, but we're proud of the fact that we're getting our debts paid off. We've been at it for two years now and we'll be debt free in the year 2000. We spend a lot of time in the truck. We read to each other, watch a movie, and believe it or not, we sing with our dog. Oh, oh man, this is incredible. We consider ourselves paid tourists now. We see the most beautiful parts of the country. Niagara Falls, the Grand Canyon, Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, and take time to celebrate life by going for long walks, holding hands, and dreaming about our future our goals for a home, and to start a family. This has all taught us some valuable lessons, not to live beyond our means, to take responsibility for ourselves, and to stay true to our spirit. And find incredible happiness in each other, and not in expensive material things. This experience has brought us so close, and there's nothing better than having my best friend with me all the time. We remember our spirit with the simple and free joys of life a peaceful drive down a country road, a breathtaking view of mountains, and a gorgeous sunset. These are things we never would have seen when we were all wrapped up in buying, having, and wanting more. Our spirits are definitely the richer for it. That's a great story. Thank you, guys. We'll be right back. thousand dollars a month for the past nine months borrow a thousand dollars a month to make it yeah and and you know and it's amazing to me that people like you with with seemingly good hearts will go borrow money to pay for people who won't work you I clearly see 
clearly, I'm, I know Phil does too, that you love this victim role. You I are, do? Yes, yes, you yeah, love you. it. You just are wallowing <laughs> in it. <laughs> you are just, wa you love it and you love being able to say, and I did this for my children, and I keep the babies and I do the things and I can, I can hold the baby on one side and stir the pot with the other and I can get, you are loving it because when you don't love it anymore, you will change that. You will change that. When you love yourself and your own freedom and your relationship, because this cannot be helping your relationship. No, we're so yeah, far apart. Yeah. When you love your relationship more than you love trying to please your children, it will change. Uh, thank you to all my guests and to you too, Dr. Phil. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.